the shadow. Who knows? What evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town who years ago, while in the Orient, learned the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend, Mark Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's transcribed drama, The Vengeance of Angela Nolan. It is shortly before midnight, and Commissioner Weston strides into his office at police headquarters, followed closely by Lamont Cranston and an agitated young woman, Carol Arthur. The atmosphere is charged with tension. There's no chance of a slip-up now, is there? I mean, Angel Nolan's going to die. Oh, no chance of any slip-up, Miss Arden. Oh. That was their last hope for a state of execution, and you just killed him. And very effective, too. I thought the governor was wavering there for a while. But you spoke your piece. Yes, after that, he didn't hesitate a moment. He turned them down cold. What time is it now? Uh, six minutes to twelve. Execution takes place at midnight. Six minutes to go. Angel Nolan, the one-man crime wave. He's been a scourge for so long, it's hard to believe he's finally reached the end of his rope. May he burn forever in hell's fire. Now, take it easy, Miss Arden. Take it easy, Miss Arden. Oh, sure, I'll take it easy. After all, why not? He only murdered my father in cold blood. My father, the kindest man who ever lived. But me, I'm to take it easy. I... Blew up like that. I understand. You feeling better now? Thank you. I'm fine. It was quite a performance that Sister Angela put on, wasn't it? When the governor announced his decision. I thought for a moment there she was going to scratch his eyes out. Yes, Angel and Angela. Not exactly my idea of an angelic pair. Not a year around. She's as bad medicine as he ever was. Well, what do you mean, Commissioner? Well, the word from the grapevine is she's taking over his rackets. Taking over his rackets? Well, I thought she was some kind of uh, entertainer. I'm sure she is. There's imitations. at one of their night spots. They say she's terrific. But that apparently is just a front. Well, what time is it now? Thirty seconds to go. I wish I was there. I wish I was standing right before him this very moment. You know what I'd do? I'd laugh and he'd say. Fifteen seconds. Ten. Five. He's dead. It's over. Yes, it's over, Miss Arden. If you like, I'd be glad to drive you home now. Thank you, Mr. Cranston. I'd appreciate that. How about you, Commissioner? Can I give you a lift? Uh, no, thanks, Cranston. There are some things I have to finish first. All right, then we'll say good night. Good night, Commissioner, and thanks for everything. Not at all, Miss Arden. I wonder who that can be this time of night. Commissioner Weston speaking. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, one moment, please. For you, Cranston. For me? A lady. Hello? Cranston? Yes, this is Lamont Cranston. This is Angela Nolan. Oh. You killed him, Cranston. You sent my brother to the chair. Well, I suppose that is a point of view. Well, I have something to say to you. Well? For this night's work. For this night's work, Cranston. When I'm through with you, you wish you'd never been born. Mr. Cranston? Hmm? Didn't you hear me? I beg your pardon. I asked when Margot Lane was coming back from her vacation. I, I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't paying attention. I guess you weren't. Uh, she's due back next week, I believe. Have you heard from her? Oh, yes. Yes, only yesterday. She's having a wonderful time. Is something the matter, Mr. Cranston? Hmm? Well, why do you ask? Well, you seem so preoccupied. That was the second time I had to repeat a question before you'd answer me. Uh, I'm sorry. Something to do with that phone call you received? It was Angela Nolan, Miss Arden. Oh, I see. Oh, what did she want? Well, she threatened me. Revenge? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she wants to see. Look out, Mr. Cranston, in the back seat. He has a gun. Betty. 
city, Chris, and we don't want an accident now, do we? Who the devil are you? The name is Cole, Bosby Cole. I'm a, a friend, let's say, of Angel Nolan. Oh, uh, excuse me, of the late Angel Nolan. Also of his sister, Angela. I hope we didn't keep you waiting. Oh, I would have waited all night if necessary. Now that your vigil is over, Mr. Cole, what now? Well, like I said, Angela wants to see you. Suppose I don't share Miss Nolan's yearning for an immediate rendezvous. What happened? I'll blow your brains out. Crash the car, risking your own death? Oh, you're known to be a gallant man, Krebs. And I say that whatever risks you take if Miss Arden weren't in the car, you don't take them with her in it. I say you take the next right. Hmm. Well, Krebs. The next right coming up. Much further, Boxy. Just to the top of the hill. Pull up at the gas station. Kind of deserted out here, isn't it? it usually is this time of night. The station's closed. Uh, I see the welcoming committee. But just Angela and a couple of the boys. All right, this will do it. Well, Cranston. Ah, Miss Nolan. So we meet again. Remember what I told you on the telephone? Yes, I gathered you were somewhat annoyed with me. Don't be cute, Cranston. I said that after I was through with you, you'd wish you'd never been born. She did say something to that effect. That was a promise, Cranston, and I always keep my promises. I see you aren't wasting any time. Angel's already dead. There's no time to waste. So you're going to kill me. You're going to have your hoodlum shoot me. You underestimate me, Cranston. Nothing that merciful. Oh? I promised Angel just before he went that I'd make you suffer the way you made him suffer. And I just told you I always keep my promises. I see. Now, what are your plans for me? It's going to be a little surprise. Surprise? I don't understand. Get out of the car, Cranston. You too, Miss Arden. I see the boys got the door to the gas station open. Miss Easy. All right. Inside. Over by the phone. Bogsy, mm. call Commissioner Weston. Commissioner Weston? That's right. Miss Arden, you're going to talk to him. And you're going to say to him what's written on this paper while Bogsy holds a gun to your head. Good. Give her the phone. Oh. And make it good, Miss Arden. Remember that gun. C -c Commissioner, this is Carol Arden. Commissioner, I've only a moment. Please listen, don't interrupt. I'm with Cranston at a gas station past Highmount. I just excuse myself. Commissioner, we've made an awful mistake. Angel Nolan didn't kill my father. It was Lamont Cranston. Commissioner, now listen. My father's painting, the Rembrandt, he has it. It's in the trunk of his car under a blanket. I, I just saw it when he opened the trunk to check his spare. Oh, here he comes, Bella. I, I don't like the way he looks. I'm afraid he suspects I know. I'd better hang up. Oh, All right, now back to the car. Get in, Mr. Cranston. Oh, look out, Mr. Cranston. He's got that. Oh. The Alfonso. Like a light. Go. And now for you, Miss Arden. Get in that car. Oh, what? What are you going to do to me? Bogsy. Oh, no. No, don't you. <laughs> well, she's real dead. Phoebe finished doctoring Cranston's steering gear. All set, Angela. Did a beautiful job. They won't be able to tell it was tampered with? Not in a million years. It looked like it happened through ordinary wear. Sounds good. Now, how about the painting? I put it in the trunk, just like you said. Guess we're all set then. Well, let's get it started and rolling down the hill. Anybody coming? No. No, the road's to this. All right, boys, let's go. One good push. No. There she goes. Police headquarters.
Commissioner Weston, after a bad time with the press, returns to his office to take an urgent long-distance telephone call. Commissioner Weston speaking. Oh, Commissioner, this is Margot Lane. I just heard the news about the man on the radio. Incredible, isn't it? Is he all right, Commissioner? Well, he's banged up some, but apparently there's nothing broken. Oh, thank God for that. Now tell me what happened. Everything I've heard so far doesn't make sense. It's pretty bad, Margot. Well, go on, tell me. Very well. After the execution last night, Cranston left my office with Miss Arden. He offered to drive her home in his car. Yes. That was about 12.15. About 20 minutes later, I received a frantic phone call from her. She said they were at the gas station. And when Cranston opened the car trunk to check his fare, she spotted her father's Rembrandt under a blanket. She said Cranston and not Angel Nolan must have killed her father. And she was afraid he suspected she knew. And then what happened? Well, we alerted all prowl cars. At about 12.45, we received a report that a car had gone off the road at Highmount Hill and crashed. We rushed out there. It was Cranston's car, all right. He was behind the wheel, unconscious, the revolver in his pocket. And she was in the seat alongside of him, dead. The Rembrandt was in the trunk, just like she said. I don't believe it. Look here, Miss Lane, I haven't time to argue about what you believe and don't believe. What I've told you are the facts. Oh, now, take it easy, Commissioner. After all, this is a friend of yours we're talking about. At least, that's what I've always been led to believe. I'm... Sorry, Miss Lane, I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. It's just that this thing's got me. I understand, Commissioner. What does Lamont say about all this? Oh, he claims it's a frame. He says Nolan's sister, Angela, masterminded it. And I believe him. But there isn't a shred of evidence to back him up. To the contrary, all the evidence points the other way. Tell me, what caused the crash? Defective steering gear. Oh, but that doesn't sound like Lamont, Commissioner. Couldn't it have been rigged? Our experts say it looks like it resulted from ordinary wear. Well, what about Angela? I seem to recall that she does imitations professionally. Why couldn't she have phoned you and pretended to be Carol? Maybe she could have, Miss Lane. Only again, there isn't a scrap of evidence to show she did. Well, have you talked to her? Miss Lane, we've checked thoroughly both her movements and those of Bobsy Cole last night. Yes, and what did you find? They have all kinds of witnesses who swear Angela returned home just before midnight and never went out again. And that Cole went to bed right after the execution. Perjurers, of course. Maybe. But with the hold they have on those people, how are you ever going to prove it? Yes. Well, where's Lamont now, Commissioner? City jail. Oh, poor Lamont. I never thought I'd live to see the day. All right, Miss Lane. Well, what happens now? I mean, what are they going to do to him? They've called a special session of the grand jury. As a matter of fact, I'm due there right now. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, Miss Lane. And uh, what are your plans? Well, I'm catching the first plane back. I'll be seeing you, Commissioner. <laughs> Hello, Sergeant. I thought you were out on the coast on vacation. No, I was. I just flew in. I came here to headquarters directly from the airport. Mm. Terrible about Mr. Cranston, isn't it? Well, it's just awful, Sergeant. I suppose you've heard the news. What news is that? About the grand jury. What about it? They indicted him, Mr. Cranston. Indicted him? For murder. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Take it easy, Miss Lane. No, no, it's all right, Sergeant. I'm all right came down about an hour ago. Sergeant, please. The commissioner, where is he? He isn't here, Miss Lane. Not here? He left here a while back. Said he had to meet the DA. Oh, that's awful. Well, do you know where I could find him? Oh, oh, well, here he is now. The commissioner. Oh, Miss Lane. The commissioner. He looked positively ill. I thought we hit rock bottom this morning. Thought nothing more could happen to me. Well, what is it? What's happened now? I can't understand it. I simply can't understand it. He was there only a moment before. What are you talking about? Cranston. He's disappeared from jail. Lamont Cranston, indicted by the grand jury for the murder of Carol Arden, has disappeared from jail. Now, shortly afterward, Margot Lane is unlocking the door to her apartment. Margot? Oh, Lamont! Oh, 
on. Did I startle you? Well, not really. I was half hoping you'd be here. Winston told me this morning you were flying back. Oh, yes, I came as soon as I could. I can't tell you how good it is to have you back. Oh, it's good to be back, Lamont. It's a fine mess I've gotten myself in. Now, we'll get out of it all right. We've been in worse ones before. Thanks for that we, Margot. You couldn't have said a nicer thing. Well, now, hasn't it always been like that with us? I know, Margot, but... Well, thanks anyway. Lamont, listen. Well? I just let Commissioner Weston. He's almost beside himself. Over my jailbreak? Yes. I had to do it, Margo. They were all set to send me into the chair. It's the only way I could get a chance to clear myself. As bad as that, huh? Worse. It's become a political football and the Nolan crowd are screaming for my blood. And because of my association with Weston, they have the whole city administration on the pan. Yes, but how did you get out? Well, that was easy. There was Weston, the DA, and a crowd of others in the cell with me. Somebody left the door ajar for a moment. I created a small diversion, and then as the shadow just walked out. You should have seen their faces when they found me gone. Mm. Well, what happens now? How do we go about proving you didn't do it? I'm going after Angela. Going after her as I've never gone after anyone before. Alone? No. You're going to help. Oh, all right. Well, what do I do? Well, as I remember, she's never seen you. Is that right? As far as I know. Now, good. Now, listen carefully. All right. You're going over to her apartment and interview her. Interview her? I don't get it. You're going to be Vicky Blake of the Herald, a sob sister. Oh, you talk to her about her brother and about me. You know the kind of thing. Uh-huh. And you? Well, I'll be along sometime during the interview, or rather the shadow will. And what do I do then? You play it by ear, Margot. You just play it by ear. So you believe, Miss Nolan, that your brother was framed by Lamont Cranston? Well, isn't that perfectly clear now, Miss Blake? Well, you tell me he broke out of jail. You can see the kind of no-good rudder he is. But just look what he did to that poor girl. And you think he killed her, too? Well, really, Miss Blake, I didn't think there was any question about it. And breaking jail on top of it. Well, what plain of confession of guilt could there be? Your confession, Miss Nolan. Your confession as to what really happened. Who, who said that? Who said what? Didn't you hear him? Hear who? There's nobody here but you and me. And, of course, your conscience, Miss Nolan. Yes. Yeah. But there it is again. She can't hear me, Miss Nolan. Only you can hear me. Who, who are you? Miss Nolan, you know I'm Vicki Blake. I am the shadow. Leave me alone. Go away. Why, Miss Nolan, is anything wrong? I don't know. Shall I tell her for you, Miss Nolan? Shall I tell her what really happened last night? No. No. Wait, Miss Nolan. Where are you going? I don't listen to you anymore. Get out. I'm going to the other room. <laughs> Nice going, Shadow. That's only the beginning, Miss Lane. Only the beginning. (laughs) What's the matter, Miss Nolan? Why are you pacing the floor? Can't you sleep? Who, who's there? You can't sleep, can you? Who is it? Who is it? You remember me. We've talked before. Lights. I have to turn on the lights. Here, don't trouble. I'll do it for you. There's nothing here. Nothing. Just my imagination running away with me. I'm, I'm overwrought, that's it. Do you really believe that, Miss Nolan? Yes, I believe it. I'm just talking to myself. I, I do it all the time. That's it, isn't it? Well, answer me. If you can. You can't, can you? You can't. Talking to myself, that's all. I'm just talking to myself. Almost convinced yourself, didn't you? Don't be... But not quite. Really not quite. I I must be going out of my mind. You will, I promise you, unless you confess. Confess to the police. Tell them you killed Carolina. No, I can't. I can't. Oh, go away. Very well, Miss Nolan, I'm going. You better get some sleep now. You have a big show to do tonight, remember? I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Foxy Cole again, and now I have the pleasure of introducing the star of our show, ladies and gentlemen, Angela Nolan. Ladies and gentlemen, I 
I'd like to do for you tonight. Yes, you've done enough, Miss Powell. I, I would like to do. A fine young woman, Carol Arden, shot to death in cold blood. An innocent man accused. I, I, uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just seem to have forgotten. Forgotten the golden rule, maybe? Oh, go away for the love of heaven. Fine when you are to be calling on the love of heaven. Leave me alone. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it. Hey, yes, yes, yes. So this is awesome. Come back here. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Nolan has been taken suddenly ill. Angela, what happened out there? I'm haunted, Bosby. Voices. It, it, it's driving me crazy. What are you talking about? I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't even do my act. He won't let me. What do you mean, he won't let you? Who won't let you? The shadow. Who the devil's that? I don't know. You can't see him. He's invisible. Oh. Oh, so he's invisible, huh? That's right. And he says I gotta confess. What? To the police. That we killed Carol Lawton and Frank Cranston. And nothing else, no. I gotta do it, Boxy. I gotta do it right now. Oh, you're crazy, kid. They'll send us both to the chair for sure. Right now, Boxy. Oh, no, you don't. Right now, Boxy. Put down that phone. No, Boxy. Well, look, kid, I have a gun. You won't shoot me, Boxy. It breaks my heart to do it, but I have no choice. My life is in your hands, and in your condition, it isn't safe there anymore. No, Boxy. So long, kid. Put down that gun. Shadow! What? Shadow? There's no one here. I'm here, and you won't be needing that gun anymore, Boxy. Hot! My arm! Stop it, Boxy! Hot! That's better. All right, Miss Nolan, call police headquarters. That one's over, Lamont. Yes, I am too, Nardra. That one came far too close to home. I don't think I've ever been so worried in my life. Yes, I'm scared. A remarkable girl, that Angela. Remarkable? What do you mean? It was quite a project she masterminded, the way she framed me. Only minutes after her brother's execution, never gave me a single chance. Oh, now, really, Lamont. And what's more, she had me. She had me cold. Dirty for a murder she herself committed. Evidence so strong, the case was open and shut. Public opinion running high against me. A cold-blooded murderer. That's all she is. I'm glad the shadow gave her such a bad time. It was the only way I could ever prove my innocence. You know something, Lamont? What, Margo? So many people, all the people he's ever helped, have had reason to give thanks for the shadow. But no one has half as much reason as I have right now. Amen to that, Margo. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when the shadow again will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> The Shadow is brought to you every Sunday by the Mutual Network in cooperation with No Dose Awakeners, world-famous wake-up tablet that helps you fight fatigue safely, gives you a lift without a letdown. Lamont Cranston is played by Brett Morrison, Margot by Gertrude Warner. The script was written by Jonathan Lewis, and the entire production is under the direction of Chick Vincent. This is Ted Nelly inviting you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, for the next exciting adventure of The Shadow. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.